Hi everyone, my name is Anna and I'm a children's librarian here at the East Hampton Library. And today I want to talk with you about some of our new books, just a little bit of a book talk to introduce you some of our new titles. Um, these titles will come specifically from our J Oversize section, which is JQ, it just means Juvenile Oversize. And a lot of people tend to think that the way they're marked, they are reference books and you can't check them out. So I just wanted to highlight a few new ones we have in that area. So again, I've got five books to talk to you about and they will all come from the JQ or the Juvenile Oversized area. Okay, the first one I have is Bennett Schroeder's Well of Stories. And the reason I want to start with that is because we tend to forget that there are storybooks in our nonfiction section, but in our 398.2s is where we have fairy tales. And then we've also in a similar, very close to that area, have um, many books from different lands and cultures and people, a lot of native stuff. Some mythology is close to that as well. But the 398.2 is where this one comes from. Um, <clears throat> Bennett Schroeder is a German Youth Literature Prize Lifetime Achievement Award winner and she is one of the icons of German illustration and a master of her trade. This is a retrospective anthology which, which includes 12 children's picture books. So it's called Bennett Schroeder's Well of Stories and you can find it in the JQ 398.2. Um, the stories do include things like The Frog Prince, Laura, and Crocodile Crocodile, which are some that you're probably familiar with. The illustrations um, are beautiful and simple. Um, I see what looks like a little Humpty Dumpty in here. Anyway, that is um, Bennett Schroeder's Well of Stories. Next I have Exploring the Deep Dark Sea, New and Updated by Gail Gibbons. A lot of you are probably familiar with Gail Gibbons' nonfiction. She writes for very, very young children. So this would be um, preschool to kindergarten age to start with, but then of course it can go up to older kids as well. Um, she is doing a lot of new additions, new and revised, so we're getting rid of some of the old stuff, adding new stuff, and replacing some things that have disappeared. So again, this is exploring the deep dark sea. And I'm gonna just read to you from the front flap in it. Follow along with acclaimed science picture book author, Gail Gibbons, as oceanographers travel down 7,500 feet to the ocean floor in a submersible diving vessel. Equipped with cameras, life support systems, mechanical arms, and more, the submersible measures and records on its four-hour trip through three ocean levels. It passes through the sunlight and twilight zones into the dark zone, where bioluminescent creatures are visible. When the ship finally reaches the bottom, it collects samples to study from the ocean floor. And this is just a fascinating look about the process that goes on with that. But I'm highlighting this again to point out that we do have several new books by her in our nonfiction collection. So the next one I have is called Cardboard Box Engineering by Jonathan Adolph. This one is a great selection right now because we have so much cardboard in our house from toilet paper and paper towels to Kleenex boxes to everything we've been ordering online with Amazon and groceries. We just seem to have cardboard everywhere. So instead of hauling it all to the recycling center, one thing you can do is collect some of it for your kids and they can make some cool inventive projects. And this book is for tinkerers, makers, and future scientists. It contains things like how to boost sound with a cup amplifier. It has a reach out robotic extending grabber. It shows how to make a tabletop soccer game or how to make a roller coaster using physics. So cardboard box engineering by Jonathan Adolph. There are periscopes, and the thing about it, when you're working on your periscope and following the steps to make your periscope, it also gives a little bit of engineering history about Thomas Edison, um, who of course uh, was a creator of that. 
Then when you get to things like a launcher, which you can make out of milk cartons, um, it just shows the step-by-steps. Lots of great pictures. It's very colorful. Um, it also talks about the different types of cardboard. And then you want to add some different things, whether it's um, paint, scissors, glue, those types of things you would need with it too. But anyway, this is the Cardboard Box Engineer book. Then next I have a book called Tales from the Animal Shelter by Stephanie Shaw. I've noticed in the Hamptons just about everybody out here has a pet and many of those pets do come from centers like ARF or Southampton Animal Shelter and some other places like that. So I decided a book with stories of animals from shelters would be a great book to introduce you to. So let's start with Lucky. This fellow has such great appeal. No tail, one eye, three legs, and a wheel. Meet Lucky. My favorite is Hamlet. Where is Hamlet here? I am a sweet, hot-bellied pig. I started small, but I grew big. I'm here because of weight I gained, but I am smart and potty trained. I know some tricks. I am neat and clean. I am many things. I am just not lean. Meet Hamlet. So there's a lot of different types of animals in here from snakes to rabbits and cats and dogs, um, parrots, and a little bit of, of a variety. But that is called Tales from the Animal Shelter by Stephanie Shaw, a book that just about any age group out here can relate to. And then finally, I have a book called Trees, A Rooted History. Now we've all had projects where we have to identify trees and different leaves and tree books can be a little bit boring to young kids who are just trying to identify things. And that book does this. It does allow you to identify trees and leaves, but it takes it several steps further. First of all, it's a very large book, so even in our oversized section, it may be turned sideways a little bit. Um, but it goes into tree dwellers and tree eaters and future trees and tree houses. Um, so why it does put some species together, like all the bonsai trees um, and different trees in different regions, it just takes it way out there and it does answer a lot of questions and I'm going to read you a couple of those. From the back of the book, what's the tallest tree in the world? How long have trees existed and how long can they live? Where can you stay in a treehouse hotel? And how can we make sure that trees survive for future generations? This encyclopedic book answers all those questions and many more with a light witty touch. Peter Soha tracks the history of trees from ancient times to present day, examining along the way the role trees have played in history, legend, and in the rest of the natural world. And there is some fantasy elements in here. Um, one section is called Forest Tales, and it talks about how pe people have used trees to stir up imagination in different tales. And then there's a section even on sacred trees and how trees are represented in different religions. So, variety of options there. Um, trees, A Rooted History by Peter Soha. Make sure I say that right. All right, thank you guys for joining me for my juvenile oversized nonfiction book talk today, and I will see you again soon. Bye.